I-N-D, 8th Avenue subway line, which was the longest subway line at this point in time, 31 miles long, begins operation on Manhattan Island. Augustine Pickhart reaches an altitude of 16,197 meters or 53,140 feet in a hot air balloon and... The first Venice Film Festival is held. The year is 1932, and this special car was on offer by Nash. Twin ignition, nine main bearings. Did I mention it was an overhead valve in line eight? But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like, the automotive channel that digs different cars. We cover the classics, vintage, some exotics. This channel is home of the orphan cars. Cars like Packard, Studebaker, Nash, Hudson, Checker, Oldsmobile, Poncho, Cord, Windsor, just to name a few. Engine episodes on Wednesday. History, specs, but most importantly, we show what these cars are like. If that sounds like a channel that would interest you, something that you will totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. I found this Nash Special 8 at Hershey AACA Fall Meet. It's always the first full week in October. If you're a car enthusiast, this is definitely a bucket list thing. They have a huge flea market with parts for cars that you've only read about really then they have a car corral where they have cars for sale there was an auction at hershey lodge and then at the very end on friday they have a car show and that's where this special nash 8 convertible sedan was 1932 nash model lineup nash was offered in five series big six series which rides a wheelbase of 116 inches. Standard 8 Series, which rides a wheelbase of 121 inches. Special 8 Series, which our car is, it rides a wheelbase of 128 inches. Advanced 8 Series, 133 inches. And Ambassador was at the top, riding a wheelbase of 142 inches. The Special could be had as a convertible Roadster, Coupe, Sedan, Convertible Sedan, and Victoria. To understand how sophisticated the Nash 8 was, let's take a step back for a minute. Most cars, not all, used flathead engine design where the pistons and valves were right next to each other. Charlie Nash founded Nash Motors in 1916 when he bought the Jeffries Company in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Charlie Nash was at the right place at the right time. Prior to Nash Motors, Charlie Nash was president of General Motors Nash used overhead valve in their early engines, but timing is very interesting. Buick would also use an overhead valve in line eight, but it would come out two years after Nash's eight. Nash came out in 1930, Buick came out in 1932. And it's also interesting is Nash came out with theirs with twin ignition. It's also interesting that the designs of both Buick eight in the Nash 8, as well as the Chevy Stove Bolt 6, they all look very similar to one another. This era of Nash is called Twin Ignition or Advanced 8, and Nash offered it from 1930 to 1934. It's worth mentioning, during this same time period, Nash also offered a super impressive six-cylinder with seven main bearings and Twin Ignition as well. And Twin Ignition meant two sets of points, coils, condensers, spark plugs, all operating from a single distributor. These were some of the best looking Nash's ever made. Like if you saw this car at a car show, you could easily mistake it for something higher class on the car pyramid. Let's talk specs. It rides a wheelbase of 128 inches. It weighs 4,000 pounds. Price. $1,475, which is equivalent to you spending $33,125, 16 cents in the year 2023. Total 1932 Nash across all of the different series was only 30,834 units. Moving on to engine, only one engine on offer for the special. It's important to note that the Advanced 8 and the Ambassador got a bigger inline overhead valve 8 than this one but this car has the 260 cubic inch displacement overhead valve in line 8 4.3 liters 
it's good for 100 horsepower at 3,400 RPM. It makes about, this is an estimate, 154 pound-feet or 209 newton meters at 1,800 RPM with a bore of 3.1 inches and a stroke of 4.3 inches. Compression is 5.25 to 1. This engine features nine main bearings. It's backed with a three-speed manual transmission. Just wow. Look at all of everything that is going on. Notice it has a grill behind the bars and it comes to a point here. Beautiful Nash badge there in the center. There isn't a mascot on this car, but it has this beautiful, Look at how massive these headlights are. So just check out how they're designed. <coughs> it's got twin horns. How this is all shaped. Coming down and looking at the bumpers. Notice these bumpers don't have any overriders. There's this nice design piece in the center. Now this has a bead that comes up. Beautiful marker lights there. car has mirrors on both sides and just look at how they're designed also look at all the bright work around the windshield all of this paint two-toneness this car has two cowls and the windshield wipers are mounted at the bottom look at how these door handles are designed notice the keyhole there hinges are nickel Look at the running board situation. The rear bumpers mimic the front bumpers. Just look at how this is all sculpted inside the fenders as well as in the gas tank back here. This is the gas cap. This one has a trunk built into it, as well as beveled glass. So just take a look at this door panel. It's got a nice map pocket here. It doesn't have an armrest, but you use the door itself for an armrest. Window crank for the big window, door handle to get out. Just notice it's all framed out, but look how thick it is. There's my finger for reference. It's got nice bright work everywhere, like in the catches. That's what the mirror looks like. Coming down inside, the pedal box down here. Emergency and or handbrake. Clutch brake gas pedal. This one has his and her glove boxes. There's one there and there's one there. On to the button switches and knobs, starting in the middle amp meter, coolant temperature, speedometer with odometer at the top, trip at the bottom, lighter just above that, crank for the windshield, clock, gasoline gauge, oil pressure, choke, ride control, the SP knob, I'm not entirely sure what that does. If you know what that does, put it in the comment section below, please and thank you. Just take a look at this interior. Coming to the rear door, it's a lot like the front door, only it's in the back. It's got a map pocket as well, door handle to get out, window crank for the big window. Windows look like that. It's got nice armrests. 
road rail. So just check, take a look at this engine. Look at all of that. Those wires coming off that distributor. This has twin ignition. There's dual coils up here. The starter motor and the fuel fuel filter and fuel pump. Just notice it's overhead valve. Ven a ver esto, Pepe, qué belleza de motor. Also notice the block it says Nash and then it says eight. So notice it's belt driven to the crank up to the fan to the generator. Then there's a shaft that comes off the generator to the water pump. This has a two barrel updraft carburetor with an air cleaner attached to it, which is pretty rare because a lot of cars didn't have air cleaners. Up here, this is the chassis lubrication push a button and it lubricates all the components of the chassis. Notice there are plugs on this side as well. There is a hole in the block. All the plugs go into this. So it looks nice and clean and tidy. But there's actually a hole right behind where this exhaust is and that's where it comes out from the other side. On the positive side, super underrated cars for what they are slash were absolutely gorgeous cars in any and all body styles. Said to have great road manners, CCCA classic status on top models, against it, mechanically complex. This is a car that I just found out about this year. 34 years old, I'm a huge Nash fan. And why this car is getting lost to time is beyond me. Honestly, that is the biggest negative about this car is information just doesn't exist. But it should. It's super sad because this car should be remembered, but it's not. Anyway, now it's time for Would You Rather. Two scenarios today, and these may or may not be in the same price point, but which one would you rather have? 1932 Chrysler or 1932 Nash 8? or 1932 Studebaker President. I'm gonna leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free, pause the video. Moving to the second scenario, 1932 Jordan, or 1932 Nash 8, or 1932 Hudson 8. Once again, gonna leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free, pause the video. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to give both the name of the band and the song title correctly in the comment section will have your comment pinned to the top of it. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below or check out our Facebook group I call The After Party. Gives you the opportunity to share your rides, stories, experiences. Anything car related is shareable on there. If you don't have Facebook and would still like to reach me, send me an email. All of it will be linked in the description below. Just know I appreciate everything that you guys bring in the comment section. And until next time, toodaloo!